Lucinda, Bay Baja, Petitanum, Pavane, Bio, Vaishna, Bay Bio, Mahamaha. Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasavi Gaur, Bhakti Vindam. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So in uh, pursuance of the festival of Lord Chaitanya's appearance, we will continue to uh, delineate some of his more regular pastimes, the ones that are more known. <laughs> Yesterday we talked about Krishna's mischievous pastimes. And now we'll speak a little bit about some of the ones that are mentioned in Chaitanya Charitamrita. And uh, you can, well, I'll actually read. <coughs> of course, the story goes, I'll narrate. They were, the Lord was playing outside. He was a young boy at the time, quite small. And two thieves came by and uh, they decided to uh, steal Nimai because he had all kinds of ornaments on. And so uh, they picked up the boy and they had some sweetmeats and said, oh, nice little boy, we have some sweetmeats. You can come with us, we will give you so many sweetmeats. So acting like his friend, they put him on his shoulder and Krishna was, Lord Chaitanya was enjoying the, the ride and the thieves were going away and they went farther and farther away. While they were carrying, you know, his parents came out and saw that there wasn't, he was gone. So they were wondering what happened, where did he go? So they went all searching all over for him and couldn't find it. And the thieves were thinking, well, we'll just take him to our hideout. And then when we get there, we'll steal all his gold and jewel ornaments. So they were going. And at the meantime, they were trying to pacify Nimai by keeping talking to him so he wouldn't, wouldn't say anything. And he was, he was enjoying the ride. And so they were going. So finally, as they were going, 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 and they were thinking they were heading towards their hideout, lo and behold, they uh, were found themselves right back in front of Jagannath Mishra's house. <laughs> the Lord had used his yoga maya potency to bewilder, maha maya potency to bewilder them. And then they went right back where, they, where he found them where they found him. And then the parents were right there and they said, oh, you found our son. Thank you very much for bringing him back. <laughs> and so <laughs> the thieves put him down and immediately left away. And then they were thinking, wow, they left so fast without even, we were gonna give them some reward, but they left <laughs> so fast. So they might fool them using his power of bewilderment and thinking they were going to his hideout, they uh, came back right in front of his house. <laughs> One day, Nimai was pretending to be sick and he asked for some food from the house of Haranya and Jagadish and it was on the Akadasi day. <laughs> So he asked his father to go there and he said, these two people, they are preparing nice foods for their deity of Lord Vishnu. I wish to take that prasadam. So his father, he went to the house, which was about two miles from the house of Jagannath Mishra. And on behalf of his son, he asked Jagadish and Haranya 
for, for prashadam. And they were astonished, thinking, how is it possible that anyone could know we were making special prashadam for Lord Vishnu? We didn't speak to anyone. And he spoke on behalf of his son, Nimai, so they concluded that this Nimai must have some supernatural powers. Immediately, they sent food to the house of Jagannath Mishra. And Nimai, feeling sick, he ate the Vishnu Prashadam and he was cured. Well, that's another story. There was another story where there, there was this big, gigantic snake and it crawled into the courtyard of Nanda Maharaj. Not Nanda Maharaj, I'm sorry, Jagannath Misha. Jagannath Misha. And little Nimai was outside playing. Well, he saw the snake and he went towards the snake. And then he sat on the snake and the snake made a seat. And actually the snake was actually Ananta Shesh who came to give little Nimai, who was Krishna himself, a place to sit and to play. So he was playing on the snake and sitting there. His parents came out and they saw what was happening and they were like really in anxiety and fear. So they took a stick and then the snake ran away. And then little Nimai said, no, no, don't do that. I want to play. So he was, he started running after the snake. <laughs> And his parents came and picked him up and brought him back into the house. So he would cause a lot of anxiety to his parents in his play. We spoke a lot about some of the mischievous pastimes yesterday. One day, a, a girl named Lakshmi, the daughter of Vallabhacharya, came to the bank of the Ganga to take bath and worship the demigods. And she was formerly Janaki, the wife of Lord Ramachandra, and Rukmini, the wife of Lord Krishna and Dwarka, the same goddess of fortune, now descended as Lakshmi to become the wife of Lord Chaitanya. When they, when they saw each other, their eternal loving relationship for, towards each other was awakened. And of course, later on, um, Lord Chaitanya married her. And then, but when he was away in uh, East Bengal traveling, Lakshmi was all alone and she was feeling great separation. So in the mood of separation, she actually left the world. I'll read a little bit just to Keep things moving. So, one time Jagannath Misha was seeing all the naughty activities of his son, so he started to rebuke him about the principles of morality. And so that same night, Jagannath Mishu had a dream. And in that dream, a Brahmin came before him speaking words in angry. He said, my dear Mishra, you do not know anything about your son. 
You think him your son and therefore you rebuke and chastise him. Jagannath Mishra replied, this is in a dream. This boy may be a demigod, a mystic yogi, or a great saintly person. It doesn't matter what he is. For I think he is only my son. It's the duty of the father to educate his son in both religion and morality. If I don't do this, who will do it? Well, the son, the Brahman replied, if your son is a transcendental mystical boy with self refulgent perfect knowledge, what is the use of your education? Jagannath Mishra replied, even if my son is not a common man, but Narayan still is the duty to instruct his son. Therefore, in the dream, they, they continue to discuss the principles of religion. But Jagannath Misha was so absorbed in parental affection that he could not understand anything more. After this dream broke, of course, in the dream, the Brahmin left and he was very pleased to hear the bhakti of Jagannath Misha. There was one beautiful story where Lord Chaitanya was, he was a teacher and he was on the banks of the river Ganga and this was in the evening time. And he was instructing some of his students there. In fact, it was a, uh, his whole class was there. So it was a good group of students. At that time, a great pundit, uh, Keshava Kashmiri came and this pundit, he was a big Vijay pundit. That means he traveled around looking for opposition in order to discuss various philosophical and spiritual topics. And then he would defeat them. And then if they defeated him, if he was defeated, they would sign his, say, Vijay Patra. And he would carry a whole list of names of people he had defeated in arguments. This Keshava Kashmiri worshipped Mother Saraswati very nicely. Mother Saraswati had provided all the knowledge that he needed. He became fully absorbed in just debate. So now he's on the, he comes and he happens to come across little Nimai. Nimai sees him. He's not a, he's a, now he's a teacher of Nayak and grammar. So he welcomes him, seeing that this person is a very uh, intelligent looking personality. So the Lord entreated him. Uh, I can see you are very intelligent. Let's see. We'll get to the actual pastimes here. So he came to offer prayers to Mother Ganga and he met Lord Chaitanya. The Lord received him with great adoration, but because he was proud 
he spoke to the Lord in a very inconsiderate way. He said, I understand you are a teacher of grammar and your name is Nimai Pandit. People speak highly of your teachings of the, of the beginner's grammar. I understand that you teach Kalapa Vakarna. I have heard that your students are very expert in word jugglery. Yes, I am known as a teacher of grammar, said the Lord, but factually I cannot impress my students with grammatical knowledge, nor can they understand me very well. My dear sir, whereas you are a learned scholar in all sorts of scriptures, are very much experienced in composing poetry, I am only a boy, a, a new student, and nothing more. Lord's taking a humble position. Therefore, I do desire to hear your skill in composing poetry. We could hear this if you would mercifully describe the glories of Mother Ganga. When this Brahmin, Keshav Kasmiri, heard this, he became more puffed up. And within one hour, he composed 100 verses describing the glories of Mother Ganga. The, uh, the Lord praised him and said, there's no greater poet anywhere in the entire world. Then he started to speak in a little ambiguous way. He said, your poetry is so difficult that no one can understand it but you. And Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning. But please explain the meaning of one verse and we could all become happy to hear it from your own mouth. Keshava Karamari said, what verse do you want me to explain? The Lord then recited one of the 100 verses. Kashmiri, Keshava Kashmiri had said. And here is the verse. The greatness of Mother Ganga always brilliantly exists. She is the most fortunate because she emanated from the lotus feet of Sri Vishnu, the personality of Godhead. She is a second goddess of fortune and therefore she is always worshipped both by demigods and by humanity, endowed with all wonderful color qualities. She flourishes on the head of Lord Shiva. When the Lord asked him to explain that verse, he was astonished and said, I recited those verses like the blowing in the wind. How could you completely learn by heart, even one amongst those verses. The Lord replied, by the grace of the Lord, someone may become a great poet. And similarly, by the grace of the Lord, someone else may become one who can memorize anything immediately. Shruti Dharma. Papa said, if we find any extraordinary qualities in anyone, we should understand that's the special grace of the Lord. Satisfied, the Brahmin started to explain the verse. Then the Lord said, well, now explain the special qualities and the faults in the verse. Uh, the, the Brahman replied, there is not a tinge of fault in that verse. It has all good qualities, similes, similes and alliterations. The Lord started to introduce what he's about to say. Please don't become angry by what I say. Your poetry is full of ingenuity. Yet, if we scrutinizingly study, we consider, we can find that there are both good qualities and faults. And then, case of Kasmir, you're only an ordinary student of grammar. What do you know about literary embellishments? You cannot review this poetry because you do not know anything about it. The Lord took a humble position and said, because I'm not on your level, I have asked you to teach me by explaining the faults and good qualities in your poetry. Certainly, I have not studied 
the principles of literary embellishments, but I've heard about it from higher circles. And thus, we can find many faults and good qualities. All right, then the poet said, all right, let me see what good qualities and faults you have found. And then the Lord began to speak. He said, in this verse, there are five faults and five literary ornaments. I shall state them one after another. And then it gets very technical. What are the names of the different faults? And after explaining the faults and good qualities, and then he said, the Lord said, After hearing the explanation of Lord Chaitanya, the champion poet was struck with wonder. His cleverness was stunned. He could not say anything. He wanted to say something, but nothing could come out of his mouth. He was completely. And then he was thinking, this boy, mere boy has blocked my intelligence. He cannot understand why Goddess Saraswati has become angry with me. And then he concluded, this boy must have been given personal instructions by Saraswati herself. Otherwise, no one could say what he had said. So he was struck with wonder. So after this was all over, they both went back home and described this instrument. But it goes on to explain that in that, that evening, the poet had a dream and Saraswati appeared to him in dream and said, that boy you think is just a mere boy is actually my master. He is the Supreme Lord himself. So you should go and surrender your life to him. <laughs> so the next day he came again and surrendered his life to Lord Chaitanya. Mm -hmm. That same Kash, mm, uh, Keshava Kashmiri appeared in Lord Chaitanya's pastime. She was Nimbarka, the Ch Acharya of the uh, Shatushana Sampradaya or the Four Kumara Sampradaya. So that was Nimbarka come again just to take part in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. We find that many times, just like Jagai and Madai. Jagai and Balai were actually the f another manifestation of the two demons, our two gatekeepers, Jai and Vijay, who became Harani Kashipu, Harani Aksha, Kubukarna and Ravana, and then Shishupal and Dadavarka. They came again to get the mercy of Lord Chaitanya as Jagai and Madai. Although they were purified from all their contamination and they had reached the spiritual world, they wanted again to take part in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. Lord Chaitanya's pastimes are so full of uh, uh, adarya, and so much mercy in those pastimes that the great souls look for opportunities to reappear in these pastimes to get the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. So we're getting ready for the appearance of Lord Chaitanya, which is tomorrow. Um, the devotees can also celebrate this evening in preparation. Have kirtan, have pravishan if you can. Continue with the mood of Lord Chaitanya. There's one verse from the 14th chapter of the Adi Lila. It says, um, I have the book right here. I'll read the verse to give you the exact statement. That's interesting statement. 
It's actually verse number one in the fourth chapter in Anilita. It says here, Kata Chana Shmita Yasmin Duskaram Sukaram Bhavet Vishpite Vipari Tamsyat Sri Shaitanya Namami Tam. Things that are very difficult to do become easy to execute if one somehow or others remember Lord Shaitanya Mahaprabhu. But if one does not remember him, even easy things become very difficult. To this Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, I offer my respectful obeisances. Now here is a, a benediction. If things are difficult, by simply by remembering Lord Chaitanya, they become easy. And even easy things can become difficult when we don't remember Lord Chaitanya. Oh. Now, this is a beautiful verse recited by Srila. Krishna Das Kabi Raj Goswami. <laughs> so, of course, we want to worship Mahaprabhu the best and most complete way, and the most satisfying way is to have kirtan, <laughs> chant the holy names of the Lord, bring many devotees together and chant. Although we are on this uh, Zoom like experience. It's not the same, but still it has some efficacy that we can take advantage of and uh, come together in association and chant the holy names of the Lord. Lord Chaitanya appeared simply for that reason, at least externally. Okay, so these are some of the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So we'll see if there's anyone who would like to offer some comments or questions on Mahaprabhu or any of his related associates. Thank you, Gurudev. Thank you so much for giving us this uh, perfect mood to welcome Mahaprabhu tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And yesterday was uh, such sweet pastimes of Mahaprabhu's childhood and today was amazing. Um, dear devotees, if you have anything to share, any realizations, any questions, please unmute yourselves. Hare Krishna. Mansi. Glory is to Shiva Prabhupada. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Shiva Prabhupada. All glories to you, Maharaj. Thank you for the Hari Bol. Maharaj, thank you for the wonderful uh, uh, pastimes. And I just have a comment of uh, whenever I read the pastimes of uh, uh, Kesho Kashmiri uh, and the conversation, I just realize uh, how how tactfully and how nicely Chaitanya Mahaprabhu dealt with it, you know, by sweet words and you know logic and patience and and sometimes I think that you know there's so much to learn from that because when especially in preaching, you know, when you know that the other person is you know, uh, wrong in his thinking or doing some, you know, bogus things. Uh, you know, it's, it's it's so nice how to approach them and, and still uh, get the message through. Yeah, he was a gentleman. He gave him all respect and honor. And even while he was tearing apart his argument, he was very gracious. <laughs> because he didn't want, he knew he was so proud that if he, wa if he was too strong on him normally or just acting normally he would have broke his pride was so strong the lord didn't want to smash him to the point of you know destroying him he just wanted him to uh learn something that 
he shouldn't be so proud of all his learning. This is where he showed him, actually, Saraswati arranged for the poet to make mistakes in his presentation so the Lord could find the mistakes and then present it in such a way that, you know, his pride was reduced tremendously, <laughs> but without destroying his, his conception of who he was. In other words, the Lord didn't want to, uh, he wanted to bring him closer and not push him away by, by defeating him. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Mansi, you're asking, what was Lord Chaitanya's favorite food? Well, he liked shak. Shak is a type of spinach. There are actually there. There are 28 different brands of shak, and it's this type of spinach vegetable that Lord Chaitanya liked. Uh, we don't know which one of the 28, <laughs> but when his when he was leaving home the night before, his mother cooked him uh, shak cooked in milk. And uh, he ate that. That was the last meal that she cooked for him before he left uh, on his way to uh, eventually uh, Jagannath Puri to live there. Thank you, Maharaj. Um, just a clarification, if, if we know and we have records of it that is it spinach and other vegetables or just spinach? I think it's just spinach, that's all. You'd have, okay. if you wanted to, do you have Jamuna's cookbook? Um, no, I don't have, but probably on internet, I can see if I get the recipe from Jamuna Mataji's book. Yeah, it's, it's called Krishna Cuisine is the name of the book. Hmm. See, it's very big. It's got maybe five, six hundred pages in it. But in there, she, she, she really goes through a lot of the exotic preparations that we've never heard of before. So if you take that cookbook and you can just every day make a new preparation from the book. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay. Yeah, your husband will be dancing in ecstasy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, and I think I've seen the you, book. I've not bought it though. I should buy it. Yeah, it's big. You'll also be dancing in ecstasy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If, well, if the devotees who honor the prasadam are happy, then the cook is always happy. Yeah, many of Lord Chaitanya's cooks were just so intricately expert in making all kinds of unique preparations. Mm -hmm. Maharaj, do we have records of those recipes? I mean, uh, Shamana Mataji. I have, I have the book. I have the whole book. Oh, Yamuna Mataji's book. Yeah, yes. that I have. You can get it. I think it's, what did I get it from Amazon or something? Yeah. Can't yeah. Remember. I used to, I had it when it first came out, but that won the number one award in the United States competition for uh, one category of cookbook. I forgot what it was. Oh, really? Yeah, or, wow. Oriental cookbook or something. Yeah, she won first class award. She became famous. 
Do we know about any other other uh, recipe or just just stock we know, right? Well, you know, Lord Saitanya ate many different varieties of foodstuffs, but that's the one that we know that he liked the most. Okay. So then I have to make that tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do it. You can do it and then try it out on the family and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sure, sure. Then they'll say, oh, you have to make it every day. <laughs> I hope so. Spinach is not very popular in the family. <laughs> Arch in the city said he, Lord Chaitanya liked, uh, was it banana flower sabji? <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj, but it's, uh, it's impossible to find here, it looks like. I think only where there are, you know, banana Pla uh, what do you say? Plant plantains. Yeah, plant yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of stuff that you can't find in the West. You, know, you can't find the quality of it either if you find it. Yeah. Lord Chaitanya loved to, to engage in feasting with his devotees. They would have huge feasts and then they would perform huge kirtan afterwards. <laughs> yes, once we went to um... To Mayapur Maharaj, and I remember we were passing through through um, a field, and we were looking through the fields. And the person who was working there, uh, we didn't know the language, and they gave us a banana flower. And they, you know, it's just I think the rickshaw person or somebody they told that you can take this and give it to the temple kitchen because it's loved by the deities, but. I didn't know which deities, but he did tell us. So we took it and then we gave it in the temple, the banana flower. Yeah, banana flower is sweet. And you, you dry the bananas and then you dry them and then it becomes and then you can take it and then you just like grind it and you have like a flour and it's very nice. You can make all kinds of nice pastries, breads, and even subjis with it. Uh -huh. You know, in the West, there's not much of a variety. We grow up on, you know, uh, grilled cheese sandwiches and pasta. And so we, <laughs> it's like all the kids now, all, I know, all the Indian kids I know, they all, they all they want to eat is pasta and pizza and spaghetti and, <laughs> and all kinds of stuff. But you know, Indian cooking is like a real science. It's some really amazing because the spicing is scientifically put together to create a balance in the uh, doshas within the body to keep the body healthy at the same time provide nice tasting food. <laughs> Those who are expert at spicing are expert at cooking. And if you know spicing, you can make with the same preparations, the same ingredients, the same vegetables, you can make so many varieties of tastes just by 
adjusting the spacing. Hmm. Are you a good cook? <laughs> we are waiting for you, Harash, to come to UK and then you can no, tell I have, me. I have to find out for myself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we are eagerly waiting for you to travel to UK. Yeah, I, um, UK is, right now it's not so, it's not okay, but I'll try to get there. Yeah, yes. Somebody just wrote on the chat that you are a good cook, so I have to believe it because it's on the chat. <laughs> oh, that's my sister, so she would say that. <laughs> yes, but we have not been passed on. We have been passed the knowledge of cooking, Indian cooking, but not um, in the detailed way as we as it might be in the previous generations like three four generations that our cooking is very simple we don't know so much that we can make everyday new things i used to cook for the brahmacharis when i was in when i first began we used to cook on wood and we had wood stoves we would go out cut the wood and bring it in and then we cook on these stoves. And wood cooking gives a better overall taste to the food than food cooked with gas. And the late, Prabhupada said, he said, first class cooking, cow dung. Second class, wood. Third, uh, gas. Fourth, electricity. <laughs> so if you can find some cow dung, make some cow dung patties, and then you can really make your food cook real nice. <laughs> yeah, man, your, house, your, house will, your house will smell so nicely. Cow dung is so, so purifying. Don't lose your culture. Prabhupada always said that to the Indians who came to the West. He said, don't lose your culture, keep your culture. Don't, don't adopt this Western culture. Pure, pure mother. Maharaj, another question is um, coming up to my mind about being humble in our peace in our and and I've been contemplating because I was hearing um, along with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, I also heard about Sanatana Goswami and I heard in one of the lectures that Sanatana Goswami and Rupa Goswami, through them, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was trying to um, teach the devotees, how to be humble. And I was thinking, I heard a few pastimes, and I was thinking that how do we endeavor to bring that humbleness in our day-to-day -day life or even in spiritual life, in material life, because humbleness cannot be artificial. So does it come through chanting or do we have to do extra endeavor as well? to bring the humbleness. I mean, how do we tell ourselves that whenever something provoking happens, how do we say ourselves that we are not the center of the world and it's okay? <laughs> <laughs> That's our philosophy. We have to live by, we have to see things through knowledge. It'll, the knowledge tells you you're not the doer. You're simply an instrument for the, for the higher powers to work through you. That's all. We are not, if it wasn't for the endeavor, I mean, wasn't for the ingredients, the time, the place, super soul, all these things. 
You can't do anything. If you don't have a stove and don't have a pots, you don't have a kitchen, how can you cook? So if you're known as a good cook, you also have to realize somebody gave you the stove, somebody gave you the pots, the ingredients, and the intelligence that's also coming from Krishna. All these things, whatever we do, we have to realize that we're just a small part of the, the endeavor. That's all. The rest is coming from the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's a very satisfying and practical answer, Maharaj. Thank you. Constantly reminding you. ourselves. Okay. Any more questions? Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, would you please tell us about this verse, chapter 14, verse 1, things that are very difficult to do become easy simply by remembering Lord Chaitanya. How can we actually remember when things are difficult? We should actually remember this verse, but we think of everything else other than Lord Chaitanya. You think, oh, I should try this. I should do that. How should, you know, I should uh, do this. I mean, basically, we forget this important verse. And actually, that's the time we must remember it the most. So how, how we can overcome this tendency, please? <laughs> well... You heard of the thing called habit, right? Yes, Guru Maharaj. So what's a habit? <sighs> Something that you repeatedly do automatically, almost like second nature. Exactly. The word second nature is the, is the key word. So... Well, what would be an example of a habit? Uh, like driving a car or um, exercising, daily routine work that you do without almost thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how do you establish a habit? Um, well, you have to make a beginning somewhere. So you start off by trying to learn it and then you try to practice it and then you get proficient at it and then you become expert at it and then it's just part of you. It becomes... Okay. You just answered your question. So basically practicing, that means practicing remembering Lord Chaitanya. Then what happens after practice? When you get good at practice, yeah. what, what happens? You automatically remember Lord Chaitanya. Okay. So the key is practice, practice, practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you then think again, it's so simple, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> if it were only that simple. Well, how do you remember to practice? That's the difficult part. We forget that we must practice. So, what makes practice easy and what makes practice difficult? Making it mandatory, like part of your routine. It, it has to happen. Certain things, you just have to do them. Well, what will make something more easier than something else in order to remember? I like doing that thing. Hmm? 
when you like doing something ah uh, thank you very much <laughs> he got the, he got the answer now <laughs> So that's our problem. We don't like remembering Krishna. <laughs> yes, that is so true, Guru Maharaj. We think we can fix everything ourselves and try to push Krishna aside, actually. But Krishna is not your janitor. <laughs> He's not your, you know, garbage man. He's not your security guard. He's not your gardener. He's not your cook. <laughs> so you can't use him simply to get these things done. Guru Maharaj, it's only by your mercy that anything will be possible like that. But really, I I really do want to remember Lord Chaitanya. If somehow now you're I... getting very, you know, you're getting un, very unphilosophical. <laughs> <laughs> Stick to the principles of practical understanding of application. <laughs> Okay, now, what, we have a choice, right? What to think about and what not to think about. Is that true? Yes. 100%? Definitely, we have a choice. Yes, Guru Maharaj. 100%? 100%. Not really. We're conditioned to think and act in a certain way. So, although we have a choice, we're we're mo we're pushed by our previous conditioning. Yes, that is so true. So forgetfulness is our nature. So therefore, we have to different forgetfulness is our material nature. Remembrance is our spiritual nature. Right. So overcoming our conditioned nature, coming to our real spiritual nature, means making that effort to come to that. And that comes by what? Chant, chant, chant. Chant, chant, <laughs> chant. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Guru Maharaj, that is so true. That is so true. So difficult to achieve. So if somebody told you, my dear uh, gracious lady, you have exactly 24 hours left in this particular life of yours. And I am a doctor and I know that what you have will soon end your life. So figure out what you're going to do with your last 24 hours. So. So if that chant, came, chant, then, chant. then what would you do? Chant, chant, chant. <laughs> well, that would be intelligent. So if we see our life like that, then what's important will become foremost. If we don't see our life like that, then we waste time with a lot of things that are not so important. Maharaj. This is very illustrative of uh, what we really should be doing. So thank you so much for taking us stepwise through this whole process. I'm deeply appreciative and grateful. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Okay, how are we doing?
Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, uh, this is Karuna Sidhu. Archana Sidhu, I have to step out a bit, so I'm here. Karuna Sidhu, so, uh, Hare Bol. <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj. Very nice hey. pastimes, very... I haven't heard some of them before, so uh, it was very nice to hear those. Uh, so we have Gaurav mm -hmm. Purnima tomorrow, so it's, it's very nice to hear. You're going to the temple? Yeah, yeah, we will. Okay, um, probably early because uh, evening they need, we need to RSVP uh, to attend the program. Uh, they don't allow more than 15 people are inside the room because it's very small. Uh, so yeah, we'll probably, yeah, we'll go early in the morning, maybe I'll just go. Uh, so they, they, they will have a Zoom call though in the evening, so we'll attend that. So. Good. Okay. So, if anybody has any questions, so we can so, end the call. So, yeah. uh, let me just make one announcement. Tomorrow, because of Gorponima, my schedule is quite loaded up. And I won't be able to do the talk tomorrow at this particular time. But I may be doing something in the evening. And if I can get the... Of course, I'm giving Srimad Bhagavatam class tomorrow early. But that would be good for the devotees who live in the U.S. The class starts at 8 o'clock CET time which would be one o'clock in the morning. So if you can't sleep, you can just listen to my class and it'll put you right to sleep. <laughs> but tomorrow there won't be any class at this particular time. And the boys can take part in their activities. Okay. Karuna Sindhu, you're sitting in for Archa City, Archana City? Yes. Yes, Guru Maharaj. She, she yes. took off, huh? <laughs> <laughs> she's around, she's attending to the kids, so uh, she'll be back soon. But uh, yeah, but if, if you're if you're out of time, we can yeah. Uh, are we on time? Are we going to end the call now, or is it? Is I it, think so. It, this is okay. is there, unless there's some more comments and questions, we can continue. Uh, listen to your. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I just want to confirm with you, um, like uh, if you can, um, is there a time change from tomorrow at your area, in your area? I think so. Mm, I haven't heard anything, but I, it's, it's, it's always the last weekend of this particular month. So, yeah. I think it should be. Nobody's talked about it, though. Uh, but as I mentioned, I won't be giving class tomorrow. Yes, yes, yeah. Here. But Monday onwards, I'm asking. Oh, Monday, yeah. Monday will be back to normal again. I'm giving an evening talk also, but I don't know if it's going to be broadcastable. It's more like a Sangha program at someone's home. Um, yeah, we all uh, I'll notify you directly about the. Yeah, Shopa confirms it. Yes, yes. Good. So we yeah, it'll be one hour yeah. difference on my time. So that'll give that'll make it. Uh, well, one hour earlier for you, right? Yes, Guru Maharaj. We'll go back to our um, back two weeks back schedule. Yes. Yeah. 
Right now it's six hours difference, and then it goes back to seven. Okay, so everyone remember Lord Chaitanya chant his holy name, take shelter of Gore's mercy by remembering him chant his holy name. Worship the Lord in his deity form as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, along with his personal associates, Lord Nityananda, Sri Advaita, Gadadhar, Sri Vas. And take um, uh, tomorrow is a great day for just absorbing yourself in Lord Chaitanya. And, uh, because he is, he is our worshipful deity, we worship Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as. Krishna himself. This day is the most important day for the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasudhi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Thank you very much. Happy Gaur Purnima Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, so very much. And happy Gaur Purnima to you too. Happy Gaur Purnima to everyone. Um, we'll all meet on Monday again. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Thank Krishna. You.